Okay, we're going to put together um, a more complex VI here called a uh, bubble sort VI. Um, a bubble sort is a very basic, uh, very common computer algorithm uh, used for learning about computer programming, and it's for taking a list, uh, an array of numbers, and putting them in the right order um, from smallest to largest. Uh, and the way that it does it is it takes the original array, so we better start with an array. Um, I'll start with an array shell and throw a numeric control in there, resize it so I can see some of it and give it some values to work with, say 5, 1, 4, 2, 8. And that array obviously is not in order, they're just some numbers in whatever order. Uh, and we'd like it to be sorted, so I'm going to make a copy of this array, change it to an indicator, and at the same time, I'll go to Data Operations and empty the array. And I'll rename it Sorted Array. So our goal is to write some LabVIEW code that takes this list of numbers and somehow figures out how to put them in the right order here. And I can just glance at it and see it should be oh, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 8. That ought to do it. It's not hard to do when you have uh, a list of numbers that's just five integers. It's considerably more difficult when it's, say, a list of a thousand messy floating point numbers. Um, and the way this um, this array or this algorithm works, uh, this bubble sort, is it looks at uh, the first number and then the next number and checks to see um, which one's bigger. If the first number is bigger than the second number, like in this case, it swaps them. And we've written a VI that does that. Then it goes to the next number and looks at it and its next value. And again, does a comparison. If this number is greater than this number, it swaps them. And then it does the same thing. And it does it until it gets to the end. And then what we have is basically an array that's only slightly more sorted than it was before. And then we do it again and again and again and we rerun this process of working through the array making these swaps or not with pairs of numbers until we're done until the array is sorted so we'll start off with just trying to do one run so the idea is we want to start off looking at the first number and then the next number and possibly swapping them based on a comparison and we're going to have to work our way through this we're going to need uh, a for loop to get this done so I'll maximize the screen give myself some room to work and let's put a for loop on here and I want this for loop to run uh, not five times four times and the reason for that is I want to start at uh, element 0 and then look at its next one and I want to go to element 1 and look at its next one and element 2 and look at its next one and element 3 and look at its next one I don't want to go all the way to element 5 because there is no next one I want to stop at this one and then look at its next one. So I want this um, for loop to run from one less than the size of this array. So I'll use the array size function to get the size of that array. And before I run it into the um, the end loop, or the, uh, the end terminal on the for loop, I can do that, but now it's going to run it five times. So I'll just right click on this wire and choose to insert the numeric palette, a decrement command. It's a minus one command. Adding one and subtracting one are such common computer operations that we have special functions for them. We don't need to use the plus and a one constant to do it. We can just use this increment or decrement command. And then what I'm going to do is take the array and pass it into the loop. By default, when you have a for loop, you get a tunneling um, or a tunnel that has indexing on. I don't want to read this one by one, I want to read the whole array into the loop. So I'm going to right click on this tunnel and choose to disable indexing. And now what goes into this loop is the entire array. Now I want to get the two values at position 0 and position 1 and compare them. So to get a value from an array, that's the index array function. And I'll use this handy little um, I value, this um, uh, increment, incremental value. The, this little guy inside the for loop, it starts at zero, and every time the loop execute once, this value goes up. 
So it'll start at zero and then go one, two, three, four, and that'll be it. So I'll use this to get the value coming out at position one. And I'll use another one of these to get the next one. So coming out of this terminal will be the first value. Coming out of this terminal will be the second value. That's what I want. So I want to go i plus 1. I need a plus 1 command from the numeric palette. And I'll wire that up. And what I want to do is compare them. You always have to think about these comparisons. Um, is it, what do I want, greater than or less than? Do I want greater than or equal to? I want greater than. What I'm going to do is, if the first value is greater than the second value, I want to swap them. Fortunately, I don't need to write the code to do that swapping, because I've already done it in a sub-VI. So I'll use this select a VI uh, option um, and go and get my uh, VI called swap that we wrote previously and put that on here by the way if you right click and you don't have this select a VI at the bottom uh, well you can operate this pull down and go down in here select a VI that's where it is you can also change the visible palettes and make sure that programming is checked and select a VI and everything else is off and then you don't have to look at all these complicated and messy tool palettes all the time you'll just have the programming palette and the select a VI option. And remember how this thing works. It only swaps if something's true. If the first value is greater than the second value, I want to swap them. So I'll run that boolean in. And then I have to give it the two positions. Well, those two positions are available. There's the first one. And there's the second one. And I have to give it the actual array. And that's pretty much it. That'll basically do it. This will run through um, the array and it'll make these swaps. The trouble is, what's it going to do with them? I got to take this value out. What I want to do is every time I make a, a swap, I want to change the array. So what I'm going to do is go and um, modify this. I'm not going to pass the array in. Instead, I'm going to use a shift register. And the shift register will initially contain the array. So this will pass the original array in. It'll get the number at position 0 and position 1 and compare them. And if the value at position 0 is greater than position 1, it'll take them and swap them and show the swapped array, the array with those swapped values. And I'll write that to the shift register. And then the next execution of this, this value will be 1, and we'll have the uh, swapped values still uh, at the shift register. And we'll look and see uh, the values in position 1 and position 2 and compare them. And if the first one is greater, it'll swap them. So what it's doing is it's kind of um, pushing the big numbers down the array and pulling the little numbers up the array one swap at a time. Once we've done this, we can write the output to the sorted array and see what we get. Let's run it once. Okay, so did it work? Is it in order? One is bigger than four, that's good, but this isn't. It's not completely sorted, is it? It's better than it was. We've only done this set of swaps once. We took 5 and 1 and swapped them. And then we, we did this comparison and maybe made a swap and this comparison. The thing is, though, you have to run this thing over and over again. We have to take these numbers and bring them over to the array and run them again. I could just type them in here manually. There's a better way to do that, and I'll show you in part 2 of this video.